So as insecurity deepens, terror attacks become all too common and the security services try to turn up the heat on the criminal elements. How did we get here and where might we be going? Well, a new report by Agora Policy, an Abuja-based national policy think tank, identifies the nature, pattern and scope of Nigeria's toxic, dominant security threats and suggests ways of overcoming them. The report is titled Understanding and Tackling Insecurity in Nigeria and its ineluctable conclusion is that it simply can't be done using military force alone. To stand a fighting chance, a more holistic approach must be adopted in which the root causes and fundamental drivers of this insecurity have to be addressed. Well, from that Agora policy report, I'm joined now by some of the authors. From our studios in Lagos, the security and intelligence consultant and CEO of Bulwark Intelligence Solutions, Tanwa Ashiru, a U.S. Air Force veteran who worked with the American Department of Defense and the U.S. National Security Agency. And here in Abuja, and still with me in the studio, the founder and executive director of Agora Policy, Waziri Adio, who is also an Arise News analyst. So thank you very much indeed to both of you uh, for joining us. Uh, let me come to you, uh, first of all, uh, in Lagos. Uh, um, just briefly tell us about this report and about its central focus. I mean, what are its main findings? So much, uh, Charles, for having me on tonight. Now, the Agora policy document was about understanding the security threats that we're dealing with across Nigeria. Um, and you know, we were opportune to work on it along with uh, Dr. Kabir Adamu, um, Major General Bamidele Shafa, retired, and Mr. Abdulaziz Abdulaziz. Uh, these are all, all, all of us are experts in our own ways uh, within the security architecture. Um, we have length and breadth understanding with defense, security, and intelligence. And so we, our approach to this document was also finding sort of the, the challenges in these core areas. And what we did, or what we ended up realizing, was that we had drivers of insecurity and then we had manifestations of insecurity. And just to explain, it's the difference between finding a bee and killing you know, a bee or a couple of bees, a swarm of bees, versus tackling the hive. The hive is what we would consider the drivers, that environment that allows insecurity to thrive. And then the bees are just sort of the manifestation, so the banditry, the kidnapping, and all those things. Uh, so we really took an in-depth look at that. We looked at some of the laws and legal um, uh, implications that are also allowing insecurity to thrive, either that by not being uh, looked into or not being revised. And so we came up with numerous solutions that I believe if these solutions are actually looked into and executed, um, they will actually go a long way in drastically reducing insecurity across Nigeria. And finally, we also broke down that report to look at um, which agencies should be responsible for implementing these solutions and broke it down based on timelines. Some of it are quick wins, low-hanging fruits that if you implement them can be quickly done within the next zero to three to six months. And some of them are more medium and others were more long-term. So it's a very, very robust document, I think, and uh, it goes a long way in, in giving sort of the leaders what they need to do uh, to bring about more stability and security in the country. Well, thank you for setting that out for us. And let me come to you, Waziri Adio. Um, what are the central recommendations? Because we all know what the problems are. Um, what are the central recommendations on how to address the scourge of insecurity? I notice in the report that you've broken it down to short, medium, and long-term recommendations. Okay, the first thing uh, that I think uh, stands out uh, is that um, Yes, it's good to sustain uh, the military <laughs> offensive, uh, but that approach is not enough. Um, like, um, you know, one um, analogy that came out from that report very well is that, um, you know, it's like you cut the tail of a, of a dangerous snake and you leave the body and the head, you know. So um, you really, you are still living with the snake and you are still exposed. So we need to take the military approach. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, when a uh, an emergency situation, we need to push back, defeat, degrade, 
uh, the, 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 the enemies of, of the state. But at the same time, we need to address the issues uh, driving conflict and criminality in the country. Um, so in terms of uh, what to do, uh, the first thing I think that, that stands out very well is that we need to look at how to make our security forces fit for purpose, right? And to do that, you need to do a comprehensive review of all the agencies, uh, uh, of all the security forces, the armed forces, and the agencies that are involved uh, to look at um, you know, uh, what is their strength, what is their mission, um, um, what tools do they have to work with, is there an overlap and all of that, is on the basis of that comprehensive review that you begin to say, so what do we need to do uh, mm. to take this forward? Yeah, that, that's a very good point. And of course, uh, Tanwa Shiru, um, based on what he was saying just now, you are a U.S. Air Force veteran. You worked with the American uh, Department of Defense with the American, with the U.S. National Security Agency. I mean, you couldn't really get better than than that. Um, I wonder what advice you would give the Nigerians about how to run their security agencies to make them more effective. And if part of that is injected into the recommendations that you made in this report. Absolutely. Um, so the recommendations also had sort of non-kinetic options and, and recommendations that we gave. So for example, prioritizing dialogue, it's so key. You know, it's one reason why a lot of journalists seem to have access to bandits and, and, and warlords and criminals, because these guys have something to say and for some reason are just not being given an avenue. Uh, so on one hand, we recognize that dialogue still is required, uh, not just even with those who are breaking the laws, but just everybody else across various communities. Also strengthening the roles, for example, of the traditional leaders there is a role that they have to play. Ideally, they're the ones who help with resolving conflict across various communities. But lately, we've just been seeing sort of that role diminish. So we talked about strengthening that aspect as well. Um, but then there was a lot of effort that was also dedicated towards uh, security sector, and so defense and security sector reform. In fact, that's one of the very key areas. And like uh, um, Mr. Adio said earlier, it's about reviewing what we currently have. What is the current status quo? Where are we? Do we have enough personnel, manpower, resources, materials? We also talked about streamlining because you have cases where you have um, one agency, for example, maybe you have uh, the Navy, then you have the Marine Police, you have the Army Amphibious Forces, you have, you know, uh, um, you know, NIMASA. So you have multiple agencies that are doing the same thing. We're seeing a lot of redundancy. So we talked about streamlining that as well. Um, in addition, we also gave additional sort of suggestions and recommendations, such as increasing uh, manpower. Everyone has talked about this. We simply do not have enough men, enough boots on the ground, enough policemen to police the 200 million plus citizens that we currently have in the country. So we talked about increasing recruitment, training them and then putting more um, personnel on the ground. And then also even increasing the use of women as well in the force. I can't tell you how many times I get approached by women across different agencies, parastatal, um, um, paramilitary agencies, law enforcement, and they say, listen, we have so much to give, but for some reason, you know, we're just not seeing, we're left doing admin work. And there is a role that women can play. In fact, they're really good with building trust within communities, which is one major area that the military is struggling with right now. And so there, there are a lot of these recommendations that we pushed forward. And, and we know that once they're able to implement these, um, it will go a very long way as well. Yes, and uh, hopefully we will have the time to come back to you for, for a final word there. Um, but uh, Waziri Adio um, in Abuja, do these recommendations find their way to the right decision makers and policy makers in Nigeria? Well, they should. Uh, we, we came out with the report today, uh, it's in the media, and um, beyond that, we're going to be sending to the people who are in a position to make decisions. And also, we're going to be having meetings uh, with uh, the candidates and also uh, the people who are involved with the sector. So that is that. And also talking about some of the recommendations, there are some that I think uh, that are also worth highlighting. For example, uh, one of the drivers of, of, uh, uh, of insecurity in Nigeria is that our borders are very porous, right? Um, and, you know, so, and we have the custom 
that is supposed to be doing uh, border policing. But custom is more interested in revenue generation, and especially when they get a cut of their revenue. So one of the recommendations made is that we need a dedicated border patrol agency, mm. right? The other thing that we also mentioned, which uh, some might find uh, 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 that was mentioned, uh, which some people might find a bit controversial, is that we said that, uh, the report said that um, uh, the country should not shy away from doing everything that is necessary to push back uh, the, the, the combat, the insurgents, uh, the terrorists, and all of that, including using uh, uh, contractors or mercenaries, uh, private, so to say, security. private security, you know, like it was done before the election in mm. 2015. Uh, if you ask Nigerians, they want to be safe. They don't care how that is done. But to accommodate the concerns of uh, some of these people, I uh, would say, see, this should be controlled, it should be specific, and should be under the guidance of our, of our military. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a very important point, uh, that recommendation um, that you use private security contractors. So let me come to you, uh, Tanwa, for a final word, because we've got about a minute or so left. I mean, there are strong indications that the security forces are fighting back in Nigeria and engaging effectively with those security cha challenges. Is that just purely speculation or did you find that in your um, uh, analysis? Well, no, it's not pure speculation. In fact, there were a lot of, um, when we were looking at the terrorist attacks in the Northeast, we definitely saw a major drop there. And so it's indicative that, indeed, the, the military are actually putting in a lot of effort to try to tackle that situation. Um, but like we said earlier, the drivers are still there. So for example, small arms and light weapons, we saw that the proliferation of weapons across the country are just numerous. And they're coming from multiple sources. You have sources from locally made weapons. You have the ones that are being taken from security personnel. And so we talk, and then the ones that are being smuggled in. So we definitely talked about that as well and mentioned ways by which these can be tackled. And then finally, I think one very key point here that we also mentioned has to do with strategic communication. We know that we're in that era of just fake news and just um, disinformation and misinformation. And so we think and we believe that the government could do a lot better in ensuring that adequate strategic communication is occurring, making sure that the people are being carried along. And so that you know the narrative is also in support of the work that the law enforcement and military are doing okay tanwa ashiru uh, who is of course a ceo of bulwark intelligence solutions is a security and intelligence consultant and of course waziri adia who's the founder and executive director of agora policy i want to thank both of you very much indeed and that's it for this edition of arise prime time join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja and lagos bye bye and thank you for watching